Fernando Ruiz Art. Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in. Now we are looking at a sketch that I did of the DC Comics superhero, The Flash. And the reason we're looking at this guy is because uh, I drew him and I drew him with examples of all sorts of what we call foreshortening. Now foreshortening is one of those really important topics. Uh, if you are very much into comics and um, drawing the typical dynamic, acrobatic, uh, really uh, it, it, exciting looking figures that you see in, in comics, um, foreshortening is a big part of that. Now, what foreshortening is, is if you see, if you look at our picture of the Flash here, you'll notice that, we'll just take a look at all of him, as much of him as we could see. Uh, you'll notice he is in a typical Flash running pose. And the Flash, of course, runs really, really fast. Uh, and his body is, we see his body sort of leaning forward uh, we see one arm kind of uh, retracting away, receding away from us. So that arm, we, we say, is in uh, a foreshortened pose. This other arm, which is coming at us, and, and notice how the arm gets closer as it gets, uh, gets larger, as it gets closer to us. That is a foreshortened pose. In fact, if we look at the Flash's torso, his upper body is closer to us because he's leaning forward. His upper body is closer to us than his lower body. And if we look down at his legs, we could see this, this uh, his left leg is being pulled back. He is, uh, this leg is receding away from us. It's bending back underneath his body and away from us. While the other leg, is stre stretching out towards us. So that effect, that effect of, of trying to make the figure look three-dimensional, like it exists in a three-dimensional space where parts of it are closer to us than other parts. That is what we call foreshortening. And it's not an easy thing. Uh, it's a very tricky thing to do. It's, it's notoriously frustrating because it can, if you don't get foreshortening right, it can look very, very off. It can look very wrong. Um, but you have to have patience with yourself and um, just accept, believe that um, the more you do this, as with everything that I'm going to recommend uh, about drawing in these videos, the more you do it, the more you exercise it, the more you practice it, the easier it will be for you. And, and for shortening, um, which relies on a little bit of, of anatomical structure, um, knowledge of anatomical structure, um, is, is really uh, one of those key topics uh, that, that subscribes to that. The more you do it, the more familiar you will be at it. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you how I go about drawing a foreshortening uh, pose, a foreshortening character. So as with all figures that I draw, I'm gonna start out very basic. I'm gonna start out by drawing a very simple head. And this is what's key about foreshortening. Foreshortening is one of those things that can very often intimidate us. Because, you know, we, some of us have a hard enough time drawing an arm or a leg, let alone trying to make that arm or a leg three-dimensional. Um, so, as, as I always say with everything that, um, that we draw, the best way to go about it is to simplify. Rather than dealing with pectoral muscles, deltoid muscles, deal with a basic shape, like a basic oval like I'm doing here. And what you're trying to do, you have to think very three-dimensionally. And I hope this is dark enough that it comes up on the camera. I'm trying to, I'm going to draw a little bit darker than I normally would, but um, 
normally I, I'd be keeping this very light because, well, you, you know, this is what we call the underdrawing and only the, the more finished end of it would really uh, be dark. But, okay. So, like I said, I want to, I want to deconstruct the figure rather than thinking of an arm in terms of deltoids, biceps, triceps, that sort of thing. I'm going to take the arm apart into segments. So there's going to be the shoulder, okay, the, the, what connects the arm to the body, and then the upper arm. And notice that I'm overlapping the shoulder. And then the lower arm, which is going to be overlapping the upper arm. And, and what I'm using for these body parts is just these very loose ovals. And then the arm, which I'm gonna, the hand rather, which I'm gonna curl into a fist, that's gonna overlap the forearm. And notice too, that with the forearm, I'm getting a little bit bigger than I am the upper arm. Because the forearm, I want it to seem as though it's closer to us. So. As, as the rule goes, as, as very common sense rule goes, what's closer to us is larger than what's further away. So as these shapes get closer to us, they are going to be getting larger. So this hand, which might not be normally this large, I want to exaggerate that just to make it pop forward. Now, similarly with his other arm, uh, if I want the arm to telescope away, to, to really recede away, so it's stretching back, I'm still going to take it a part, one, one part of the arm, one segment of the arm at a time. So I'll have the shoulder, and then the upper arm, and then the lower arm extending away from that, and at the very end of that, a tiny hand, because this hand is going to be further away. Again, I'm going a lot darker than I normally would. Now the torso, the torso we are looking down. This figure is leaning forward. I don't even know who it is yet. I'm just kind of scribbling here, just to give you an idea. You know, that arm is coming forward. The torso, I want the torso to recede so it's like pulled below this figure. So. This whole shape is going to be the upper body, and the lower body, what might be the pelvis, is going to be pulled back. And then one leg, I want one leg to be coming forward. So this, this thigh is going to be coming forward, the knee really sticking out at us, while the, the lower leg is going to be really small, getting smaller, below the upper leg, and it's going to be capped off with a small foot. Okay. The other leg, I want this one to really recede, so it's going to be like half of an oval. And it's going to be pulled underneath his pelvis, so we might not see that much. Maybe I might have a little bit of a foot peeking out from underneath, okay? So this guy, this is a very basic body. I could really turn this guy into anybody. Maybe what I'll do is just ask in the comments section who you want me to turn this into, and that could be another video. But, this is how foreshortening goes. So these body parts, like a normal arm, I'm simplifying into a sphere for the shoulder and really these cylindrical ovals for the upper arm and for the lower arm. And then of course, a sphere for the, the, the hand itself. And so I'm taking these shapes and I'm just overlapping them, popping them outward in order to get that foreshortened view, in order to, to make them seem like they're coming out at us. So that's what I'm doing with this guy. 
And now that I've got the basics down on him, I can go ahead and now I could go and, and detail him more. Maybe I'll turn him into Superman. I don't know, I might turn him into something a little later. And then in a future video, I may show, show you the, the end result. So this is, so that's foreshortening. Like I said, it's, it's not easy. I, I might be, the way I'm zipping around this figure, I might be giving you the idea that it, that it could be an easy thing. Um, and as you watch me, you, you may be thinking that I'm having an easier time of it than I am. And then you'll go and you'll try something. You, you'll try some foreshortening yourself and you'll end up, you know, drawing something that looks a little weird, but that's normal. You know, uh, for one thing, trust the foreshortening. Um, sometimes an arm will just look like a weird arm from certain angles. Uh, and, and it's, it is because of the foreshortening. Keep in mind, we're, we're not used to seeing a lot of poses like this. We're not used to seeing people running at us, flying at us, uh, throwing punches at us. Unless, we, unless we're leading very colorful lives, we, we don't see that too often. So um, we're not used to seeing the body parts in these positions. Um, so trust it. Sometimes when we, when we sit down and we do draw a foreshortened arm or a foreshortened leg, because it is foreshortened, it's going to look unusual to us. So we, we, it, it's going to look off to us. But trust that it is in, it is in perspective. It is uh, in a foreshortened view, so it's going to look unusual. Okay, so that that's about it for this guy, and I hope I hope your your understanding uh, perspective, or I'm sorry, foreshortening a little bit better. Uh, we'll bring the, the flash back. You can see him again. Uh, I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions at all, I'm sure this is. Um, this is a really tricky uh, topic, and I may pick it up in a future video. Uh, to I may I may do a part two to this one. Uh, but if you have any questions in the meantime, uh, please let uh, please uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, any feedback, of course, is always appreciated. Um, and uh, as always, uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for uh, watching and listening to me. Um, and uh, I hope if you enjoyed this, you'll check out my other videos, you'll subscribe, and uh, click like, and don't forget to hit that bell. All right, everybody, thanks a lot for tuning in, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.